digital maturity is a measure of an organization's ability to create value through digital. It is hence a key predictor of success for companies launching digital transformation. Our session four hits the nail by discussing how does hospital assess itself on digital maturity rating. To chair this session, we have Dr. M. I. Sahadullah. Sir is a veteran, patron Kahu, and the founding chairman and managing director of Kim's Health. His experience in healthcare sector ranges over an impressive 40 years, spanning across several countries such as India, UK, Saudi Arabia, USA, and other countries of the Middle East. Welcome, sir. Speaker for today's session is Dr. Elliot B. Sloan, President, Foundation for Living, Wellness and Health US, President, Healthcare Technology Foundation US. Dr. Sloan has been a, a HIMSS board member, serves on the IHE, which is the Integrating the Healthcare Enterprise USA uh, Board of Directors and is co-founder of the IHE Patient Care Device Domain. Uh, Dr. Sloan has spent over four decades in the dual career spanning digital healthcare and biomedical engineering. For the past 20 years, he has held related academic research and teaching topics and has published over 200 peer reviewed papers and presentation. A warm welcome to both of you and hand over to you, Dr. Saadullah sir. Hi, uh, good evening to everyone and um, Abhisha, uh, thank you very much for a very generous introduction. And um, um, you made my life easier by uh, introducing Dr. Elliot also. And uh, Dr. Elliot, I'm uh, very happy to welcome you to this audience. And um, Kahok uh, Tech is a, a very reputed conference uh, happens every year um, in India. And um, you know, this time I think uh, about 800 plus people have registered. Coming back to our subject, I think this, uh, um, everything is digitization. And um, I'm a clinician and a manager, and uh, now I am trying to forget uh, clinical medicine uh, because I think everything is happening by AI and robotics and uh, machine learning and everything. Technology actually have come a bit late in uh, healthcare in general. But um, in India, uh, I think it was still uh, late, uh, you know, um, maybe behind the um, few years in the, from the international world. However, uh, we are catching up much faster. And um, um, so we, we now we have a confusion from what degree and what maturity level we should have because India is a big country and has 70% um, um, is in a private healthcare. Insurance has not established its um, foothold in um, that much at all. It's only about uh, maybe under 5% of the population. So um, uh, we have uh, front desk uh, admission, discharge, all that is um, automated and then we are coming to, um, you know, complete 100% uh, usage of HIS, which also is a very, uh, not many hospitals in India will have it. And then of course we are going to IoT, AI, machine learning and all that. And um, so obviously hospitals have confusion, uh, which level of maturity we should uh, adapt and uh, how fast and uh, at what cost. Uh, to give us uh, some insight into this, and I think um, you have <clears throat> done a lot of research and um, you, you are very much into this, um, and there are various uh, ratings, various um, levels of adaptation, and uh, we will be very eager to hear from you some practical tips how uh, Indian hospitals or Indian healthcare should adapt. We, we have gone done very well with this other you know number and uh, this uh, vaccination drive with the COVID network and all uh, but here uh, cost is a factor when private sector and uh, and even government sector adopts to it 
Over to you, Dr. Elliot. We are, uh, you know, uh, we really want to uh, welcome you to this gathering. Thank you. Hello, and thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to join you and have the opportunity to uh, share uh, information uh, with you. I have worked with India for years and around the globe. Uh, here is the uh, presentation that I will be uh, discussing and the uh, order of my uh, presentation and topics. I bring you greetings from my friend and colleague, Dr. Manish Kohli, who is a past chair of HIMSS uh, and has enormous experience in the health informatics field. I'm going to go through our bios quickly because really the information is available for you uh, to look at on your own. Let me just say about myself that I was, uh, I was raised in a hospital. My father was a radiologist. I saw every evolution of radiology, and I thought every child spent their life uh, in the summers in hospitals. I spent mine in the dark room uh, and uh, uh, discovering all the wonders of uh, that era's uh, radiology and medicine. Uh, HIMSS, the, the Health Information Management and Systems Society, it, it, it is really a, a crossover group that covers both systems and uh, informatics. And the HIMSS maturity models evolved uh, around 2005 uh, out of the Software Engineering Institute, SEI Institute's uh, uh, software uh, maturity models. But our models are healthcare specific, they're outcomes oriented, uh, they're prescriptive, clear, uh, informative. They, they simply state clear compliance requirements and uh, there are industry standard terms that are used around the globe for describing how uh, uh, information systems and organizations uh, grow to expand and create more expansive uh, information solutions. Uh, so th th on the right hand side is a roadmaps, benchmarks, uh, they're global, uh, they're aspirational, uh, they're market driven and very much vendor agnostic. There are many maturity models that HIMS has developed over the decade and a half. Uh, they, they represent different areas like continuity of care, uh, clinically integrated supply chain. How, how many of us have been humbled by supply chain limitations uh, throughout this pandemic, uh, for example? Perhaps 10 years ago, people wondered, well, why was that even a topic? Uh, infrastructure adoption model, uh, think about our adoption of telehealth so abruptly around the globe. Uh, and, and we have this AMRAM model, which perhaps has the, the most traction and visibility, uh, and I'll explain that in just a moment, but it really is based uh, very much on the SEI uh, AMRAM model. The MRAM uh, model is uh, focused on and emerged out of looking at patient safety as a, as a key uh, indicator of uh, adequacy or appropriateness, increasing patient satisfaction, uh, supporting clinicians, and securing data. And, and again, the time frame for this was about 2005. In the U.S., we were just beginning to adopt uh, medical records uh, and electronic health records uh, across our industries. So there are these stages, uh, not, uh, it's an odd statement, really the ancillaries, lab, PACS, and uh, non-digital, uh, uh, non-DICOM image management, cardiology, those are uh, diagrams are really beautifully covered in the last presentation, but those by themselves, as the final slide showed, it, they, they have to be integrated into an entire organization, an entire informatics platform, an entire data analytics, and uh, ultimately some kind of outcome for patient care. So as you climb the ladder from stage one to stage seven, we, we're, we're describing many different uh, tools that have to be integrated. Uh, in the U.S. in 2005, about 80% of our hospitals were at stage one or stage two across the United States. Uh, today, about 80% uh, or 90% of our hospitals are in the stage six or stage seven area. That was hard won, uh, and we'll, we'll talk a bit about that, uh, but we really have, by investment in technology and investment in workforce capacity, and by innovation, uh, we have allowed our, co our country the, uh, the opportunity to accelerate and uh, perhaps just in time to deal with the pandemic. Uh, stage seven organizations use data to improve outcomes related to processes. So it's not just about clinical, it's about admissions, it's about discharge, it's about financial management, all of the clinical services and support, and of course, quality and safety as a bedrock. 
uh, paperless or near paperless. I don't think any of us have gotten completely away from paper. Uh, and also we have many patients and clinicians for whom paper is still a primary uh, a method for record keeping and annotation. Uh, fully committed to continuous process improvement through collaboration. We have many communities around the globe, uh, including HIMSS India and IHE communities who collaborate to learn from each other and accelerate this transformation of healthcare that is happening. So let's talk about the digital health maturity model that has evolved uh, to help us drive healthcare uh, innovation and transformation. Uh, we went the, the MRAM model, the, the maturity model that I just showed you, the seven stage model is, is very much a, a skeleton. It's, it's, a, it's a framework for a house of quality, for a factory of wellness. The digital health indicator model is has shifted the focus from the framework, from the infrastructure to the patient, uh, to the physician, uh, to the outcomes. Are patients safer? Are they healthier? Are they happier? It, it is, it is, are we focusing on sickness or on wellness? And uh, so we have a, a maturity model that is useful for this, and it, it is maybe from a 30,000 foot view, looking at governance and workforce, interoperability, predictive analytics, and person-enabled person health. Well, what does person-enabled health look like? Well, it looks like what we've come to take for granted with so many web-based services, whether it's uh, um, uh, travel or it is uh, uh, Amazon or uh, any local information, all of that is now at our fingertips. And that's what consumers want today. That's what physicians and nurses want today. The HIMSS digital indicator measures uh, the, the, the progress towards a digital health ecosystem. It's people-oriented. Uh, health and wellness is its core uh, interest and focus. Security and privacy, which was mentioned earlier, is critical. And also the point of care, wherever and whenever care is needed. The hospital as an enterprise has four walls or more, but healthcare today is, is reaching out to people individually on an hour by hour, 24 by seven basis. Operational and care delivery processes have to be outcome driven, informed by data and real world evidence. And they ultimately, as mentioned uh, just before, they have to be affordable and sustainable. Uh, the journey to healthcare transformation deals with understanding what competition. Competition can be local, global, uh, it can be by technology, uh, setting goals for the transformation, wellness in the community, maternal child health, et cetera, uh, stakeholder buy-in and collaboration, benefits uh, that tailor to an organization's strengths and capabilities, and implementing strategy that can drive the transformation forward. Uh, there is a link here that will take you to a rapid assessment tool for uh, the digital health transformation and also provide a link uh, later to the MRAM uh, transformation. So digital health technologies are not a means to an end. Uh, better healthcare is the end. The digital technologies are not the end uh, in and of itself. So the HIMSS maturity models provide a global peer sourced uh, assessment tools. They have been developed by your peers and colleagues around the globe. They represent best practices, benchmarks that you can use. So the question really becomes, well, how, how have they been applied and where have they been applied? So I'm gonna give some examples of the last several years progress based on implementing, developing, moving forward, leaning into these maturity model uh, uh, examples. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. Healthcare wasn't built in a day. We heard about the inertia in healthcare. Well, inertia, inertia is important, yet during the pandemic, we're learning we need to be agile. We need to move quickly. So there is this balance that we are constantly striving. Uh, the, the digital health indicator, the MRAM, provide a framework for assessment, a framework for comparison, a framework for benchmarking, creating roadmaps. Uh, they identify fundamental building blocks, and they're, they're really critical to growth and success across our entire industry. Maturity models help us assess, plan, design, and implement critical resources. And my interpretation is in any enterprise with major gaps in the above resources will not likely succeed, survive, or be sustainable.
So the newest transformation in our country and in many other countries now is virtual hospitals. Uh, I saw in a, a, a KHO a presentation about four months ago how telehealth is becoming part of and has become part of Indian healthcare. Uh, so we're innovating in many ways. A hosp virtual hospital reaches outside of the hospital's four walls. Hospital at home is being explored around the globe to provide patient care in place uh, as a supplement uh, and sometimes a potential replacement for healthcare. I'm working with a team in uh, central Queensland uh, in Australia that has a, a tremendous uh, it, it concept and framework that they're implementing for a virtual hospital. And they have a huge geographic area with very, very sparse population. So they have a lot of motivation to make this work. Kaiser Permanente has been working on these uh, programs and processes for well over a decade. Uh, they have many, many different dimensions of how they envision care delivery to their patients and customers. They are the largest uh, HMO in the United States covering tens of millions of patients. Uh, I see that four different kinds of uh, hospitals, virtual hospitals. Uh, one place is a, a kind of novel, it's a hospital without beds. Well, what does that look like? Um, in 2016, so five years ago, already Mercy Hospital was delivering virtual hospital care from a building that had no patients, no beds. Uh, they, had, they built it as almost a military-like command center so that the uh, physicians and nurses could work with patient by patient, hospital by hospital, other clinicians uh, accelerating care. Advent Health uh, in the U.S. Uh, built a, a, their own uh, command center in about this time frame. A type two hospital is uh, one that has access to physicians, but they don't need to travel. Uh, patient data is kept within the hospital, but they can tie in physicians as needed and specialists. So Kaiser Permanente has had many different iterations, very early adopter, a very early stage seven AMRAM example uh, in the United States as well. Uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, Cleveland Clinic, uh, using kiosks, remote ways to touch patients, give them access to higher levels of care. Of course, today, a lot of this can be done with apps and accessories. Uh, Intermountain Health, we're seeing now, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, a lot of collaboration and integration of techniques and tools. Uh, even more aggressive is hospital and home or acute care and home, which I might have said 10 years ago was a fantasy. But in fact, it's being delivered. It's being delivered not just in the US, but in many other settings around the world. A remote patient monitoring, uh, th th this is also quite different than traditional home care, which is for chronic low risk patients. Uh, in uh, Mount Sinai Hospital is discharging patients with coronavirus. The UK is discharging patients with coronavirus with in-home oxygen monitoring and other care. So Mount Sinai is an exemplar. They were very early adopter. Uh, uh, Intermountain Health uh, and Mayo Clinic, two other very innovative uh, areas. The United States Center for Medicaid and Medicaid actually created a, a set-aside uh, business model and revenue stream, and there are over 100 different hospitals and health systems now who are providing this kind of hospital at home management, specifically focused on COVID-19. But the same techniques are useful for many other activities. I'm working with surgeons who are building out the same kind of post-patient care uh, using these hospital at home strategies. The uh, UK National Health Service created its own uh, uh, virtual hospital, virtual COVID ward at home program, very, very similar. Mount Sinai Hospital is setting the pace uh, in New York. Uh, we see examples of this are, are literally around the globe. So what are some of the key success factors? Um, all of these hospitals that I've shown have very, very similar uh, uh, kind of ad adoption or adaptation of the HIMSS maturity models in their own way, within their own culture, within their own business models. Uh, enterprises that, that develop these uh, tools and these capabilities based on these models have been very, very successful. Uh, the goal out of the COVID-19 transformation is keep patients safe and out of the hospital. So early and mild patients are kept as home as long as possible. In the UK, there's a formal pulse oximetry at home and uh, we're accelerating patient care everywhere. Um, in this model, governance, workforce, predictive analytics, interoperability, person-centered health is the goal. I'll tell you that what's missing from this, I'm a 
I'm a remote patient monitoring guy. Uh, telehealth is not explicitly described, but all of the examples I have given have simply added remote monitoring as a modern ability to expand care. So India's critical success factors, this is my opinion. And it was said earlier, if anyone can pull this off, it is India. You have a huge skilled technology workforce. Uh, you are the source of so much uh, code written for not just healthcare, but for business. You have a massive young digital native workforce. 80% of my grad students are from India and uh, more than half of them are women. You have a much better balanced workforce in my experience. You have embedded uh, English language and cultural awareness, which allows you to be more effective as the global source of help desk uh, telehealth and also the earliest adopter of telemedicine uh, on the planet. And your healthcare requirements are immediate. You have the, uh, the necessity of invention, and I think you are well positioned to be successful. If our colleagues in vast and very, very Spartan Queensland, Australia uh, can work on this, I, I, I believe strongly that India is able to do that. And again, thank you for the opportunity to share this information from myself and Dr. Manish Kohli. I'll stop here and uh, open the floor for discussion. The thing is that uh, we um, have the uh, national health digital uh, mission coming up, uh, you know, in the national level by the government of India, and um, you know, and uh, all the states and uh, the whole country can be connected, and that's what, uh, and it is going to be launched within a few years, uh, within a few months' time, in fact. And right. uh, so, um, I wonder this uh, the there is a this uh, hims Emra uh, model is the most accepted model or there are other models also? It is by far the most accepted model. There are stage six and stage seven hospitals all over the world. Uh, HIMS has uh, expanded to a global collaboration with uh, many, many nations and uh, is therefore uh, validating the MRAM model uh, in, in throughout the world. Uh, HIMS India is part of that process. So it, 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 look, these are not these are not novel in the sense of uh, again, if you look at the Software Engineering Institute's uh, uh, computer and information maturity model, uh, it, it's structured the same way. You have to crawl, walk, run. You can't you can't build a system without fundamentals like cybersecurity, without fundamentals like standards, data uh, 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 control, governance. These are these are key to survive in any business setting. Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, any questions for the audience? Um, you know, maybe we can take a question. I think uh, the time is uh, again a factor. Um, any questions? I think another point while we're waiting is that uh, these are vendor agnostic and these have been developed by our peers in the hospital industry. These have not been developed uh, by the vendors. These, these have not been developed by government agencies. Uh, these have been developed by talking with CIOs, CMIOs, uh, hospital executives, uh, government agencies uh, to identify what are the 21st century capabilities that are needed and expected by our citizens around the globe. Yeah. Now, the one factor in India will be when it is coming to the private sector or, uh, or uh, many hospitals are individual and uh, their, their groups and chains are much less. And um, so the affordability factor, uh, you mentioned it. Um, uh, how, how do you think that uh, a country like India can face it? Uh, I think India is very well equipped to face it because India doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the technical horsepower, the wisdom, the, the programming skills uh, exist in India. India is the source of, of that. Uh, I, I think that also the same tools that are used to uh, build uh, manufacturing industries, finance industries, government uh, uh, services, they're the exact same skills we need uh, in our field. Interoperability is probably the biggest cultural barrier. Uh, you know, the, the slides shown at the end of the last presentation illustrate really the, uh, the last mile. We're struggling with that in the United States. We have standards for exchange of information between hospitals and government agencies, but health information has been tough. 
uh, I can travel anywhere in the world with my credit card or ATM card and have access and my cell phone and have access to all the services that I need. But even locally, getting my own uh, most recent blood tests, getting information about my um, uh, x-rays, uh, having the doctors and hospitals share that information has been brutal. And it is not because we don't have technical standards. We have a huge number of technical standards that are very well vetted uh, for every application in healthcare. But the proprietary silos, the silos between different states in the United States, the silos between different health systems, physicians, physician specialties, uh, that has been a, a blocking. Uh, so I, I think the key for India is to uh, figure out how to carve through that cultural business barrier uh, quickly, as quickly as possible, because it is it, it, the sustainability is critical. Thank you, Dr. Elliot. Elliot and, Pleasure uh, to be you know, with you. I really appreciate um, that it was a great insight in the maturity um, uh, level of rating and uh, you know and uh, adoption of innovation and technology. Dr. So Coley and I are glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, India.